guys, my name is Nicole Young and I just finished about two weeks ago my through hike of the Appalachian Trail in under five months and I was ultralight the whole time. I'm a little bit of a gear nerd so I did a lot of research before I left and I ended up keeping pretty much all of the same gear through my whole hike. I was very happy with all my choices so I want to share them with you if you're considering through hiking or if you just want a really nice, lightweight, comfortable weekend setup, I'm going to talk you through some of my smaller items and then spend a little more time on the big three. So, coming to you live from the bamboo forest that is my backyard, I have my tent set up, my cookware set up, my sleep set up, and my pack. So I'm going to start with some of the smaller stuff. So for my cook system, I had the Snow Peak Giga Power, which is a really great gas canister stove. It screws right on top of these nice gas canisters, and it even has its own built-in lighter, which some people say fails, but I never had any trouble with it. You just click this and it ignites. It was great. It has a really flat top so your pot stays nice and steady. Now for my pot, I had the Sea to Summit collapsible silicon pot. It has a titanium bottom and silicon sides and it actually folds down flat with your lid in your pack. Now my lid actually snapped in half about halfway through my hike so that was something that was a little frustrating. The other problem which I did not foresee is that in the 100 mile wilderness about five days before I finished, some mice decided to chew on my pot and it being silicon unfortunately they did break through the sides so I'm gonna have to throw this one out once I'm done with this video other than that I was very happy with how it performed uh, it's not heavy it does collapse down but it actually has a slightly larger volume than I needed so I would probably on a next through hike go with something like just a classic tin or aluminum cup with the handles that fold out the fuel canister can actually fit right inside of this and I found that for most of the meals I cooked this volume was actually sufficient and it's a nice cup to drink out of too which you can't do with the silicon pot. So overall I was very happy with my cook system. I only cooked hot dinners and the rest of the time I did cold food and bars and crackers so I was really happy with it and one of these canisters uh, lasted me a really long time. I only went through about five or six in the entire through hike, so they are very weight efficient. You really only have to carry one and you don't even need a backup. So that's my cook system. Highly recommend the stove. I also had, for my water, a squeeze bag with the Sawyer Mini. Now I'd heard that the Sawyer Mini was kind of slow, it gets clogged easily, it's really hard to pump out a full bottle of water. And by the end of the hike, without regular back flushing, which is my own fault, it was getting really painfully, incredibly slow. So although I was really happy with the Sawyer system and the squeeze bag system, in the future I would maybe try the full-size Sawyer, which is maybe only an ounce heavier and filters a bottle of water in about half the time. But otherwise, again, no problems with the Sawyer. It's super lightweight. You can drink right out of it or squeeze this into a pot or another bottle. So again, another product that I really liked and I'd highly recommend. I also had some odds and ends like a headlamp, a Kindle, a trowel, uh, just small things that did add up to a few pounds here and there, but I really kept my accessories and extra pieces to a bare minimum. And you can see a full gear list on AppalachianTrials.com if you have any questions about some of the smaller things that I carried. Now for clothing, you're looking at what I wore for 99% of my through hike. Uh, in the beginning, I did start with an additional pair of long pants and a long sleeve shirt plus a puppy jacket and a knit cap. However, once I hit Damascus, Virginia at the end of May, I sent everything home except for what you're seeing and my puffy jacket and I never had a problem. I got all my warm weather gear back right before the whites and that was the perfect time to get it back, but I didn't carry backup clothing. I would just wear a towel in a hotel when I did laundry and that is another thing that helped keep my weight down. I slept in this, I hiked in this, I basically didn't take these clothes off for five or six days straight. That might not work for you. I was very smelly, but it worked for me and I was very comfortable. So, one of the most important things on a through hike, I think, is your sleep system. If you're not sleeping well, you're gonna be grumpy and tired and you're not gonna hike well and you're not gonna enjoy your experience. So by all means, get a sleep system that works for you. It's gonna take some experimenting. So, what I have here is my sleep system. It was incredibly comfortable. It was warm enough for all but maybe three or four nights, and even then I just put on extra clothes and I was pretty much fine. So, what I would do when I first got to a shelter is set up my inflatable mat. You may notice that this is a shorter mat. It comes down to about my torso, my thighs. It's called a torso length. 
And for me, because I sleep on the side when I'm curled up in a fetal position, it's actually long enough for me, but I'm only five foot two. You might need the full size. It only adds another few ounces, but for me, going ultra light with the short mat was exactly what I needed. I was very pleased with that. Very comfortable, slept no problem. So on top of that, I used my Enlightened Equipment Enigma quilt. So you can see it actually doesn't close all the way. The foot box is enclosed, which is the model Enigma that I like, as opposed to some of their other models that are completely open, just like a literal quilt with no foot box. I prefer this because I do sleep cold, and even if it wasn't very cold, I could still stick my feet in there and have this hanging off of me, and I was really comfortable. This is the 10 degree bag. I got it in short and slim. Uh, which again saved another couple ounces of weight and also saved a little bit of money because it's a little less expensive. Now as a 10 degree bag you'd think you'd be warm enough every single night. Again I said I was actually kind of cold some nights. I tend to sleep very cold. For some people that might be too hot. Again find what works for you but for me this was extremely comfortable and really good sleep. Now on the nights when it was extra cold or extra hot I would add in a liner and this goes inside the quilt and wraps me. And this would be used on a really hot night when I just wanted a little thing like a sheet on top of me or on an extra cold night, it add another layer of warmth. And even on mild nights, it's better to have this kind of cottony feeling fabric against my skin than the fabric of the quilt, which could feel kind of sweaty or clammy sometimes. So I'd highly recommend a liner. Even if you don't sleep very cold, I found it added just a little bit of comfort. And even as somebody who's in ultralight gear, I really liked that this helped me sleep just a little better for only nine ounces. Totally worth it for me. Again, find your own system, but this was one of my favorite pieces of gear. So my sleep system is my pillow. Now I can't sleep without a pillow. Again, it just adds a little comfort to my nights. So I used a stuff sack. I wrapped my buff around it at night. And inside the stuff sack, I kept my puffy jacket. So. Not only does it make a nice, cushy, soft pillow, but in the morning, especially a chilly morning, my puffy is right under my head. It's a little bit warm. It's ready to go, and I can throw it on to make it just that little bit easier to get out of my sleeping bag. So again, another thing that really worked well for me was using my puffy as my pillow. Now, we want to move into my other part of my sleep system, which was my tent. So behind me, you see my tent, it's the Solplex by Z-Pax. It is made of Cuban fiber. It weighs only about a pound. That's the tent and the stakes. There's no ground cloth. There's no separate rain fly. And I don't know if you can see, but I actually use my trekking poles as the tent poles. So that saves a little more weight there. So all in with the stakes and the tent, it only weighed about 18 ounces, a pound to 18 ounces. And I only slept in my tent for about maybe 20% of my nights on the trail. I was really into sleeping in the shelters. I found that more comfortable. But on the times I did use my tent, it performed fantastically. It's waterproof, obviously. It held up really well in the wind. It's very easy to set up. Um, and for me, again, being five foot two, I had enough space in it that I could actually stretch out or I could put my pack up by my head or down by my feet if I wanted to keep it inside in case of rain. It does have a nice big vestibule in the front. This is the only door, so you could just reach out. I left my either my pack under here or my shoes or my flip-flops or anything that I didn't want in the tent with me, but I wanted to keep covered. And again, it performed flawlessly, and for the weight, uh, you can't really get anything lighter weight that has this level of comfort. So very, very happy with my Soul Flax. Highly recommend that one. The final piece of gear that I had that I was so, so happy with was my pack. So this is the Gossamer Gear Gorilla Pack. It's a 40 liter pack. They also have the Pilgrim, which is a 36 liter. I found that just a little bit too small. Also that one does not have a frame. And then they also have the 60 liter Mariposa, which I did see some people with and they were also very happy with. However, for me, the 40 liter Gorilla was the sweet spot. It does have a lightweight internal frame that you can remove. I tried removing it. I found it much more comfortable with the frame. So for the five ounces, totally worth it to keep the frame with the suspension system. It has a padded hip belt with two pockets. I kept my snacks in my right pocket and my phone in my left pocket ready to go for pictures or if I was listening to music. Very accessible, extremely comfortable. And the number one thing for me is that I can reach my own water bottles in my own pack. So I keep my water bottles on the left side here. I just reach back and grab it. It's super accessible and super convenient. I could filter and refill water without even having to take my pack off. Now it has a snap closure up top, so you just undo the latches and the top flips up 
and you have access to the interior pocket. Now I line my pack with just a plain black contractor bag. It's a thick plastic so it doesn't tear easily. It keeps everything inside completely dry, keeps the inside of the pack a little bit cleaner, and it's about a dollar for a bag or even less. Super cheap, super lightweight, worked perfectly. This way I don't need an external rain cover which never really keeps you truly dry and you have to kind of take it out and put it on when you think it's going to rain. I didn't want to deal with that. So the internal contractor bag was the way to go for me. The outside pocket, it's super stretchy. Out here I usually kept my guidebook, my trowel, um, a sweater, my flip-flops, any extra snacks that didn't fit in my side pocket and it would just stretch and get bigger and bigger as much as I needed it to. You might see a little hole here. That's not a product flaw. That's a my flaw for leaving trail mix in the outside by accident and mice chew through it. So you live and you learn and the hole actually never got any bigger or expanded. So even though it was torn through by the mice, it never got worse. So I have no complaints. Oh, I found uh, so Gorilla to be the perfect pack for me. Very comfortable, very lightweight, just the right amount of space without giving you too much so you feel tempted to carry everything. Um, so I really like this pack and I'd highly recommend the company. It looks brand new if you look at it close up. It held up to my hike wonderfully. Um, I think they're designed to carry 25 to 30 pounds. 25 was the maximum full weight that I ever carried, but my base weight was around 10 to 12 and I was usually no more than 20. So with that, it was extremely comfortable. The last thing I just want to mention is my rain gear. Some people carry rain pants, a rain hat, a rain jacket. I carried a $5 plastic poncho with a hood. When it started to rain, I could throw this on. It went over me and my pack, came down to about mid-thigh, covered my shorts, so my legs and feet would get wet, but that's pretty much unavoidable anyway. Again, it's ultra light. It weighs about an ounce. It's about $5. It worked great for me. And when you are in camp, you can use it to sit on if you want to keep your butt dry, so another perk. So I'd highly recommend trying that as well, rather than heavy rain gear. See how it works for you. You never know, you might like it. So those are all of my key pieces of gear. Again, I was really happy with all of them. They all worked really well for me. It's a great place to start doing your research if you want to try to go ultralight. Again, my base weight was about 10 to 12 pounds. So you can see a full gear list on AppalachianTrials.com. My author name is Nicole Young. Look me up. I've got a full gear list as well as a full blog of my hike. You can also find me on Instagram at Nicole Young One. That's N I C H O L E. If you have any questions, feel free to get in touch. I love talking gear and I'd be happy to help you go ultralight and find the stuff that works for you. Thanks so much and happy hiking.